Root Mobile presents the next frontier in digital communications in association with CNBC TV18. Ladies and gentlemen, a fireside chat with uh, Rajdeep Kumar Gupta, uh, the managing director and group CEO of Root Mobile. Let me tell you a little about him. Rajdeep Kumar Gupta is a dynamic entrepreneur who uh, founded this company and is leading Root Mobile Limited, one of the fastest growing uh, global technology and cloud communications companies. He is among the youngest tech entrepreneurs globally, and his leadership uh, has made Root Mobile uh, one of the top global cloud communications companies. Rajdeep will take us through the journey of Root Mobile, the vision for the future, and how innovation in digital communication is reshaping the landscape for uh, the businesses worldwide. Without further ado, may I have him on stage? And to moderate this session, may I also invite Lata Venkatesh, consulting editor at CNBC TV 18. And the fireside chat is called The Next Frontier in Digital Communications. Thank you, Mugda. This is the most appropriate way to kick off uh, an evening which uh, has just been described as seeing India in an inflection point, and that's what Rajdeep Gupta embodies. Rajdeep, uh, I read the, uh, uh, you know, the introduction or a bit of your uh, start. It's absolutely fascinating. He started with a 486 computer. Remember 2003, 2004, I think? I mean... Imagine a 486 computer was his first investment and perhaps the only investment he made with his own money and the rest was money generated from the business. So let's hear it from you, Rajdeep. How did you break out of a salary job and come to being an entrepreneur with limited means? I think the journey which I started in 2003 and when I see myself today here, I think it's a roller coaster ride. I know people think it's a, for an entrepreneur the rights i am been successful, i built a company. But trust me, I built that uh, entire base of Root Mobile through that 486 PC. Just to share, that PC was not the new one, it's a second-hand PC. So <laughs> I built the entire uh, Root Mobile first platform using that. After 20 years, I can say that whatever I have achieved, I'm really excited, I'm very happy. I think in one life, a tech entrepreneur has a different vision bootstrapping a company, then scaling a company to, I think the first challenge was reaching a $1 million. And for every... How much did you first put in? A computer and how much money? I think total investment I've made in this company is just uh, 1 lakh rupees. That's the only money you yeah, I think this ever. calls for a round of applause. Do you know the market cap of his company? It is 10,000 crores today from a 1 lakh investment. And I think that's a one thing which all, I always keep on sharing with the young entrepreneurs also, like it's all about your ideas and your uh, vision. It's not about you really need to raise so many uh, rounds of your funding, you know, like, and you are only successful when you raise fund. It's a secondary. If your vision is right and your product is right and you understand the customer problem, you know, and you're actually solving the customer problem in the right time, right way. And 2003, when I came to India, leaving my job, I think during that time, I realized India as a country has a huge potential in communication sector. And I think that really worked well for me. And I think reaching $1 million was the first target, you know, uh, for me. And it took almost three years to reach a revenue of 8 crore, you know. And from 1 million, the day I reached 1 million, I realized I'm doing something correct. You know, otherwise, I always had a doubt in my mind whether I'm doing right or not. It took three years to reach $1 million in terms of revenue. Now almost we reached to a half a billion dollar revenue, you know. So the idea is, I, and best part, like I got the best people around me. So any company which get built, it's always not just vision of founder, but the people around you, they play a very critical role. And I always keep on sharing this, whatever success I have received in the last 20 years, because I always had a great people around me. And I had a vision, but they executed my vision. What gave you the idea? Uh, uh, you know, which part of the uh, communications network should I chip in? Was there anything that triggered this? In 2003, you know, like when you use your credit card, the only way you can uh, come to know that how much money you have withdrawn is the email access. Yes. So bank used to send an email. And in case if your card is stolen, 
and somebody's misused your card, by the time you reach to your PC to access your email, it's three, four hours. And I think that's the one idea which came to my mind, like why can't we create a solution which, where we alert the customer instantly that you have withdrawn 10,000 rupees from your account. And I think till 2003, SMS were used just mainly for promotional. You know, there are hardly any use case of transactional alerts. And keeping that in mind, and I realized the potential India has because the population of India and the digital adoption of India is going to be multifold in coming years down the line. If I build something for the B2B segment and alerting the customer about every single use cases, uh, use of their credit card, yes. I think that's one point which I realized and I think and we started building the whole uh, platform based on that. You have TeleSign and you have uh, Bix. If you can tell us exactly what is this uh, circular uh, uh, plan that you have and that you're offering. So TeleSign is now part of uh, Rootmobile uh, as an Opal group. And very soon we are working out to integrate Bix also as a part of uh, group as a Opal. So if you see the entire flywheel, uh, so we have uh, connect, engage, and secure. So these are the three touch points of any customer journey which is going through the digital platform. So what you need is a connectivity to terminate your messages to the end user. In that case, the Bix plays a very critical role because they are connected with over 1,000 operators globally. They are the mobility side of our business. So we try to use their connectivity to terminate messages globally. That's one advantage we get, and that's my connect part. The moment it comes to Root Mobile, we are on an engage of that flywheel side. Engagement part, the customer engagement part, is what we take care of at our end. So it is not just starting from the lead generation. So in starting from lead generation to customer engagement to customer support. So some of the channels which has evolved in the last few years, if you say WhatsApp or RCS, yeah. they are actually now become a two-way conversation. Absolutely. I still remember in 2003, SMS was just an impression. Yeah. Now, because of WhatsApp and RCS, it's become conversation. So you are actually going to interact two-way using this channel, and this is the, actually the power of these channels, where we are very excited as a company, how we are going to change the way people communicate with their brands. And the last one is a secure. Everyone talking about digital adoption, you know, like India is you know, like in a surge of having billions of transactions. At the same time, you also have a risk of digital fraud. So digital fraud in India itself is in billions of dollars, right? But nobody comes forward to talk about their losses. Nobody wants to admit it. Yeah. And they don't admit also honestly sometimes, you know, because they just want to hide, oh, there was a fraud happened in my platform. I don't want to go and talk about it. RBI is putting so many uh, uh, ads nowadays, you know, just to spend some kind of awareness in the market that people Absolutely. should be really aware of this kind of a fraud. But still, the frauds are happening. Happening, yes. The telesign piece is more on the secure side. The APIs of TeleSign will give an insight to customer or the brand, sorry, to exactly know whether this particular transaction is a fraud or fraud free. So I think we as a company probably have a very unique offering to our customer where we are talking about connectivity, engagement, and the security. So probably we are the only company, honestly, we are the probably company in the entire CPAS ecosystem. And that's why if you see the Opal story, the Proxima story, the Proximus has built these three companies together. Combined, we are an almost $2 billion revenue company with over almost uh, 2,500 people globally yeah. operating from 40 countries. So we, very, we are very excited as a root mobile, being a part of such a large group and uh, looking forward that how people can use our API and have a better outcome with their customers. Rajdeep, what's the uh, you know, next step that you see uh, uh, now that you'll offer all these products? How do you see it evolving? Will it be more conversational with WhatsApp uh, again as one of your partners? So you have to understand two things. The digital adoption means, does not mean that everything is going to be conversation. The SMS now is a become a trust. Yes. It is no more SMS or a spam messages to you. No. If I use my credit card, I really want to receive that SMS to know how much money Absolutely. I have spent. Absolutely. So people say SMS is another mode of just a spam messages I get. No, it is not like that way. SMS is going to be remain there, and SMS is going to be the king in next 10 years down the line. Because one particular digital transaction, if we talk about India, let's take an example of India. The digital adoption is fairly 
spread in tier one cities right now, tier two maybe. The tier three, tier four cities are still not using digital platform as they're supposed to. Because of the Chinese phone, people have access of smartphone, yes. but people are not using smartphone smartly. Mm. They have a smartphone, but they're not using smartly. Are they doing their banking transaction using smartphone? No. In tier two and, sorry, tier three and tier four cities, smartphone is only used for uh, YouTube, or Instagram. Yes. That's the only use they are having yes. right now. Think about this adoption goes to Indian tier two, tier three city, which is large. That's the scale we are expecting in two to three years down the line. And these people, when they start using the digital platform for the digital transaction, that's the kind of potential we are looking at. So the next stage at. will be really deepening your penetration yes. into... Uh, and not just India as a market, like India may have half a billion uh, smartphone devices right now, which means that there is still potential of having uh, more, like half, uh, half a billion more. Let's talk about the emerging countries. Africa, far behind in digital adoption, Latin America. So I always keep on telling my sales team also, like it is not about which market you operate in. People talk about US as a large market, best market. In terms of realization, we agree, but the population, is the main key for digital adoption. The volumes and numbers. Volumes and the number of devices. More number of, uh, uh, I think the population carries transaction, right? And that is where we are excited. We are a champion of emerging countries, whether it's Latin, India, or Africa. And that is exactly where we are building the whole company. And that is where exactly what Proximus thought they should acquire Root Mobile. And we partner with them. Uh, in fact, they didn't acquire completely. We are partner with them. Yes. I'm also. Uh, holding uh, I'm Opal. To that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm very bullish about the overall growth of uh, digital adoption. Plus, SMS is going to be the king. Next 10 years, SMS is going to grow multifold. The other channel like RCS and WhatsApp will also grow. Yeah. And uh, I still believe that digital adoption, uh, especially of these channels, are not at the peak. Okay. It will take two to three years down the line for all the enterprises to adopt. Okay. But looking forward to that. Root Mobile presents the next frontier in digital communications in association with CNBC TV18. Root Mobile presents the next frontier in digital communications in association with CNBC TV18. Okay, now let me come to this Proximus question. Uh, you know, you gave away your stake. That, uh, at, at, at any point, do you think that Look at the way the valuations are growing now. And uh, now that the last of the OFS, okay, I'll just tell you the story. Proximus uh, held 83% 80, in um, uh, Root Mobile, and the Indian laws require that any uh, promoter can have only 75%. So they did an offer for sale, what we call an OFS. So the Root Mobile stock was not going up because we know that sale will come. That sale is over now. So my sense is that the Root Mobile stock will start going like a rocket from here on. At any point, do you think, oh, why did I sell? Not honestly, because I always see that as a bigger plan for me. I'm not exited 100%, first of all. I've reinvested about 50% of my cash out to holding company, which is Opal. Yeah, some $280 million came Yes. In so, in fact, if you see the combined entity, uh, Root Mobile, Proximus, and Telesign, we are almost a $2 billion uh, revenue company. And we do have a bigger plan together. I think the strength-wise also, you can scale a company sitting in India to a level, right? As a founder, you also need to think about change. I have built something, I will own it forever in my life. It is not going to work. I think that things are getting changed now. It used to be 10 years before or 20 years before when people want to build, oh, this is my property, I want to... Build. You have to be a little bit innovative in your investment, in your thought process also, and that's exactly what I have did. I've invested, reinvested uh, 280 million, 300 million uh, euros, and I know the value I can build out of that maybe in billions. You know, it's what a matter of time. What kind of access is it giving you to what kind of companies which you would not have had access if you didn't have Proximus? I'll give a simple example, you know, like uh, we were chasing Salesforce from the last three years to start serving them. Because of Proximus, we've been invited uh, by Salesforce for their Dreamforce uh, event in Round of applause, SFO. gentlemen, this is big. <laughs> you know? Salesforce actually invited you. And that, that's a change we have seen, you know, not only uh, there's, we recently do, did a partnership with Infosys, uh -huh. you know, 
now be a partner with Infosys. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. yeah. So I think that is how we see the value where company like Proximus, when they come on board, they also bring lots of strength along with them and people and credibility, right? So maybe I could have reached to a label after 10 years, which I can do with them in two years. So I'm just killing that gap of eight years with this. Okay. Rajdeep, when you talk to us about the India opportunity, you, say you could see it in 2003 or 2004 itself. How does that look like in 2024? So India is a great place, uh, you know, like I think... You spoke about three C's. Yes, yes, I think I've already shared so many times and I think I just love to share that. I think, I think you might be knowing about this three C story, you know, like I met one friend of mine in New York around 20 years back and he said, oh, Rajdeep, India is known for three C, which is cricket, corruption and computers. So, and I said, fine, corruption is fine. Cricket is fine, but computer, at least you said computers, we, at least in that time also during the dot-com time, at least we were known as a computer. I met the same gentleman recently and I asked him, I, I just, from front, I said, do you know that uh, India is known for 5C now? And he said, oh really? And I said, yes, India is still known for cricket, corruption is still there, and computer is still there, but now Indians have courage and conviction. And that is one thing I think, that's really well said. And I think the courage, because Indians, the new generation, the new founders, you know, like they are willing to take risk. You know, during my time, 20 years back, probably being coming from a middle class family, I didn't have that kind of courage, but I somehow fought against all my odds and I said, no, I will go ahead. But during that time, out of 1,000 people, maybe one can take that kind of courage. But now in India, out of 195 people will take the, have their courage to found a company and start thinking about this. And conviction, because conviction about the product they can build, the, because the market size. You see the companies coming from abroad, building their market in India. Why can't Indians can build something for their own market and sell in the global market? So that so is courage and conviction, I believe Indians has. And thanks to the government policies, thanks to past government policies, I think we are at the right spot. India is going to shine for the next five to 10 years. And everybody who's looking out to found a company or looking out for new ideas, guys, trust me, India is the best place to do that. What are the big lessons you want to give the next generation of entrepreneurs? So I think the people in the current generation, the only problem I see that everybody wants to become a billionaire overnight. And businesses are built over decades. You know, it took 20 years for me to reach the label where I can cash out, right? You really need to build a company first. You need, really need to build a culture first. You really need to have a people around you who can stick with you for the last longer time. And now everybody wants to raise funds. Everybody wants to go faster. So if you see the 90% 90, 90 of the, uh, you know, like uh, new companies are getting died in one or two years down the line. There are only few companies who are going to last for over 10 years. And those founders will have a different mindset. And that mindset is not about just cashing out or building something and there's a lot of IPO raise going on nowadays. I think people should not think about IPO raising, uh, cashing out. Let's build a solid business. Once you build a business, by default, there are so, so many investors going to chase you. Rather than you chasing money, money will chase you. I think that's what you need to build as an entrepreneur. What would you look at? Do you look at... Uh, no, I think volume... Know, qualitatively different product. Would you look at volume? What would you... As a founder, I'm very clear that innovation is the key for our success. Uh, we are not here to just focus on one area of our growth, whether it's a volume or a margin. You know, like if we do things right, the, the kind of potential we have on new channels, whether it's email, or WhatsApp, or RCS, if we do things right, there are huge opportunity we can get to increase our margin. So I think innovation is a key for me right now, and we, we as a company always believe that we really need to build something which solves customer problem. I think Root Mobile customer first approach is something we always want to live with. And in coming days, I think innovation is something which we are going to focus on. And during that innovation, we'll leave everything to the market, to the, our customers, our partners, how they value our uh, product. If they are happy, which means that we have done something good. If they are not happy, 
which you I think know, we failed to do that. Right? That's a great lesson, not just for startups and new entrepreneurs, but really all of us. What keeps, what should keep us going is not looking at the share price or looking at uh, the revenue number, but whether you're really solving people's problems and whether you're really innovative or is the next innovator uh, eating you for lunch. Many congratulations, Rajiv Gupta. Thank you, Gupta. Yours is a fascinating story, a story where you don't go by what the stock market and the PE companies are offering you, but uh, the ability to stand on your own feet and the ability to see yourself always as an innovator. The challenge is innovation, not margins or revenue. Many congratulations and all the very best for a fascinating future. Thank you, Lata. Root Mobile presents the next frontier in digital communications in association with CNBC TV 18.